DuPont presents the Cavalcade of America. This evening's broadcast from the Cavalcade of America presented by DuPont has to do with the American farmer. And our closing announcement contains a number of little-known facts about the relationship between cattle and farming. It is particularly appropriate that this broadcast should describe the growing partnership between the farmer and the chemist. For this week, an organization named the Farm Commergic Council is meeting at Dearborn, Michigan, to review that same subject. At this conference, businessmen work with leaders in science and agriculture to develop ways and means whereby industry may use an even greater share of the farmer's crop than it does now. And after hearing the information in our closing announcement, you'll agree that the farmer plays an important part in helping DuPont create better things for better living through chemistry. DuPont Cavalcade Orchestra plays an overture based on two well-known American songs, My Little Gray Home in the West and In the Gloaming.
from early colonial times, the first settlers on our eastern seaboard had to wrest food and shelter from the great wilderness surrounding them. It's the spring of 1790, the first year of our country's constitutional existence. The Weston family, Jonathan, Priscilla, and their boy, have taken over a grant of land near Pittfield, Massachusetts. Jonathan is in the field. Priscilla! Jenny! Come on out here. Yes, Jonathan. What do you want? I want you to help me plant corn. But, Jonathan, you haven't cleared the field yet. We can't wait any longer. The season's too far advanced already. We'll have to plant it between the trees. Papa? Hmm? Papa, look. There's some beavers around here. Oh, no, Daniel. No, you wouldn't find beavers so far up the Look at the way the trees are ringed around the block. And ringed twice. I never saw a beaver make a double ring before. That was done by a beaver called Jonathan Weston. You, Papa? Why did you ring the trees, Jonathan? It will kill them. I hope so. We don't want any leaves. Corn like the sun. And plenty of it. Come on now, let's all get busy. We've got a lot of work to do here. Now, I'll stretch the earth loose with a hole. Then Daniel can make a hole in it with a stick. And Priscilla, you drop the corn in and cover it over. Well, I never. It'll be a funny-looking cornfield full of dead trees. Not for long. When the trees die, I'll burn them. Then we can take up the stumps when it's a good time. Well, that'll take a long time. Papa. Huh? Papa, look. There's an Indian thing. Give him a gun. Priscilla, go into the house. Are you friendly, Jonathan? He's got a handle. Just the same case, be careful. But he does seem to mean well. Oh. Oh? What do you want? Me, hungry. Want eat. He does look starved into a skeleton. I'll get him some bread and eat. Good. You, me, friend. Yes, yes, friend. Come on, Jenny, we can't lose time. Put the corn in that spot I just hold. Just, just a little further over. Now, now stamp it down. No. No good. No good? What's wrong about it? Red man make corn grow long time. Me show how. Look. Look, Papa. Hmm? He makes two holes. One for each grain of corn. So they don't cut. In a sort of... Corn here. Bean here. Close. You got beans? Of course we have. I'll go get some, Papa. First, Corn Hill. Here, from Here, peas. Then, Corn Hill, pumpkin. All grow good. Well, thanks, friend. Here. Here's bread and gruel. Oh. It'll make you feel better. Red man, thank white man for food. My friend, you're welcome to all we can give you. Your advice should increase our ladder a hundredfold. Slowly and by hard work, the Weston family cleared their land. As Jonathan's son, Daniel, grew older, he helped his father in the field while Priscilla busied herself making supplies for her large family. It is 1809. Madison is president. Young Daniel Weston is a man of 22, still planting corn and clearing land. Well, you're late getting into the field, Daniel. I was leaching ashes for Mom. I'm making soap and needs to lie. There ought to be plenty. Well, get busy pulling some. All right. Pop, that land down by the field looks to me like better soil. Let's plant there next year. All in good time, Daniel. We haven't cleared this field yet. Anyway, South Hill's too stony. <laughs> I'd as soon pick rocks as pull stumps. Rocks will make good fences. He'll clear this land first before we move on. I've been reading a book called The New England Farmer. Turned over to Whitby. According to that... Oh, you... you can't learn farming out of books. And you can find out what other folks have done and what luck they've had. The book puts me in mind of South Hill. Yes, well, you save your wind for these stumps. When we get every last one of them out, time enough to think about new land. Fresh the gun, powder horn over here by this tree. Say, Pop, I got an idea. Now, look here, son. If, if you think you're going to start any new land... <laughs> we'll start on it before you think, Pop. I bored a hole in the base of that stump yesterday. Uh, and if we put in some powder, it her off, I'll bet that... Well, yes, that sounds promising, Danny. 
But how are you going to set her off without blowing us up, too? I've already planned a safe way, Pop. I wet some of the powder and mixed it in a little clay to slow it down, soaked a piece of string in it, and dried it to make a fuse. Now, now I'll put powder in the hole in the stump, like this. There. There. It'll work. Hey, Kelly, too? Well, I'll lay the fuse in there now. There. Now, give me a tinderbox, Pop. It's all too late. Now, you be mighty careful, son. I will. Yeah, if this does the work, we'll be farming South Hill before you know it. All right, Pop. Uh, she's lit. Yes, hey, it's burning fast. We'll use a little more clay next time. She's got to the stump already. Don't, don't stand so close, Danny. Wow. We give that old stump a busting, all right. Why, say, there's nothing to do with it now except pick it up for firewood. Well, the stump's out all right. Say, it's a temptation to waste more powder. Oh, sure. Right. Let's shoot all the stumps. They're our real enemies. The use of powder to clear land of stubborn tree stumps and rocks was a great boon to the farmer and his workers. Then, in 1811, farm history entered a new era with the founding of the Berkshire Society by O'Connor Watson. The object of the Berkshire Society was to advance agricultural science and to promote agricultural fairs where farmers could exchange ideas. Soon, another great event carried farming westward in a bow. The impetus comes in 1825. Jonathan is gone, and Daniel, his son, is now master of the Western farm, head of his own family. It is the close of a beautiful day in the golden time of Indian summer. In Daniel's great barn, the farmers, young and old, have gathered for miles around the western annual husking bee. Uh, oh, Daniel. Yeah? Well, Lucy? Daniel, I think the girls ought to help husking now and help me set out the supper. Where's Ruth? Well, oh, uh, over there. Husking with that young fellow from Virginia. Oh, he's all the way from the Shower Valley. I like her taking up with the boys in the southwest like that. They're so restless. Oh, well, he seems a good sort of fellow to me. Why, oh, well, look at there. He's got the red ear. Well, Ruth, who's just her? She's any daughter of mine. <laughs> ah, but she did, though. And that's just what you did to me when you were aging twice as pretty as she is. <laughs> yeah, Mrs. Weston, Mom. Give me a kiss. I'll go along with you, Daniel. I've got work to do. And you get the cider now. Oh, no. What's the matter? Here comes Ruthie on the run. Oh, I knew that fellow from Shenandoah was too forward. Papa, Mama, what do you think? Uh -huh. Hank, I, I mean Mr. Livingston. Well, he just got the red ear and he kissed me. Yes. We saw it. But you didn't hear what he said. He asked me to marry him. Marry him? Well, I never. And what did you say? I said no, of course. But I mean to just the same, if you don't mind. Well, if your mind's set on it, there's no use of our mind. You're a Western, Ruth. And I'll give you my best land. Oh, by the South Hill. Oh, well, that's sweet of you, Papa, but... Well, Hank wants to go west. Mm -hmm. All the way to the Shenandoah? Much further. Way out into the old Northwest Territory. Well, as far as Ohio? Maybe further. You ought to hear Hank tell about it. I'd just like to once. Well, you can. Here he comes. Oh, uh, Mr. Weston, sir. Miss Weston, ma'am, I... Young man, what's this nonsense Ruth tells me about your wanting to take her west? Well, I, I do, ma'am. I, I asked her to marry me. Uh, well, uh, we don't like the notion of seeing our daughter go out into the West. Uh, if you two are set on wedding, why, you can have my South Hill land and settle here. Well, that's mighty kind of you, Mr. Weston. I just got to go West. You see, there's a fella grew up with me down the Shenandoah, and I promised him before I left that I'd go with him out to Ohio just as soon as he and his father finished some work they're doing together. Uh, working on some crazy machinery to do farm work by engine instead of by hand. Huh? What nonsense. Yeah, that's what I tell Cy. But he won't listen. Oh, I know he's a great friend. You like him, Ruth. What does he Cyrus? Cyrus McCormick. Well, McCormick or no McCormick, the West isn't civilized, and goodness knows when it will be. All right, now. Ruth 
and Hank were married and went back to his home in the Shenandoah Valley. But their migration westward is delayed. Hank's friend, Cy McCormick, is too busy working on a new invention. In harvest time, in the year 1831, Hank drives Ruth over to the McCormick farm. I don't see how you can give yourself a take an afternoon off right in the middle of harvest time, Hank. Well, uh, you see, Ruth, the day is going to decide whether we go west or stay right here. Well, what's so important about the day? Well, you see that for yourself in a minute. Yeah, look, there's Cy now over in the wheat field. A land thing. What's that thing he's sitting on? Whoop, 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 there, there. Whoop. Why, that, that's the farm engine, Cy. Si. Yeah, that's why we've been hanging around home the last few years. Oh, that's a crazy fool thing. What's it supposed to do? Harvest wheat. You mean make horses drag that contraption around instead of him using the pipe? Yeah, yeah, that's what he says. No harvesting has been done with sickles and size as long as man can recall. Size and one thing's that, huh? You know, he's just wasting a lot of fool time. But he promised me that if this thing didn't work, he'd forget it and move on out west in the spring. Oh, I don't know as I'm saying just to move now with me to the nice home here. Oh, say, there, there's lots of fine land waiting for us out west. Ah, hello, Si. Hello. Oh, you're plumb crazy, Si. You better get off that thing before you get caught in it and get whooped to death. You just watch. Get up, you. Come on, Daddy. Get your way to that car, boy. Here. Well, for mercy's sake, look at that. Gosh. Let's get on and look at it nearer. All right. Oh, who bet? Who bet? Hey, let me help you, hon. There you are. Hey, come back. What a machine. Yeah. Look, look, it's, it's leaping all right. Got the swath wider than any man can reach for the size. Oh, oh, oh. How do you like that, eh? Well, uh, well, Si, I guess I don't much like it, because now I reckon you won't be going west at all. Uh, of course I will. Got to go west now, eh? It'll take all those prairies out there to give this reaping machine of mine a man-sized job. into the great farmlands of Indiana and Illinois. Clearing land and raising crops was a lot easier for them there than it had been for the westerns of Massachusetts. But while the western prairies yield to the new farm machinery, back in the east, another pioneering movement is underway. The first agricultural experimental station in America. This was so successful, it later developed into the Sheffield Scientific School, a part of Yale University. In the year before the election of President Lincoln, a letter arrived at the Western Farm, which is now run by another generation of Westerns, John and his son, Joseph. Here's a letter for you, Pop. Oh. It's all the way from Illinois. It's from that Ruth. Oh, uh, well. Wonder how she is. I'll read it out. Well, she says they're all uh, well. Cousin William's going to the new Michigan State Agricultural College. Gee, Pop. Can I go to? Yeah, to Michigan? You must be crazy. Oh, I don't have to go that far. I can go to Michigan. Yeah. Yeah, farming out of books. Well, Uncle Timothy did. I've heard you say he brought the farm back to this old time yield after he'd been to the experimental station in New Haven. Yes, but your uncle was fine farming before that. He knew what he was reading about. Well, you've got to keep up with the times, Pop. Oh, let me go. Yeah. Well, all right, after harvest, you can go. Oh, gee, Pop, that's great. I'll learn how to raise new crops and make every square rod of land we've got worth a lot. Well, if you'll just learn what we can raise in the top pasture, sip stones, I'll be satisfied. The Cavalcade of America, presented by DuPont, moves on. In 1862, President Lincoln signed the Homestead Act, opening the Western government lands to pioneers. And immediately, there was a mighty surge westward. Descendants of Jonathan Weston moved out across the fertile plains to the new land grant. But meanwhile, time has dealt harshly with the old Weston farm near Pittsfield. It has fallen into neglect. Its tired acres lie rock-strewn and untilled. 
All its young men have thrown westward into new and more fertile fields. Only one old lady remains behind, waiting. Yes? Uh, Mr. Weston? Yes? I'm Lemuel, Grandma. I've come to get you. You got Father Griffin. Well, well, so you're Lemuel. Mm-hmm. Land sakes, I don't know just for a Weston anyway. <laughs> the Weston men are all like good men, too. And good farmer. Are you ready to leave now? Yes, I'm as ready as I'll ever be, Kelly. Are these your boxes? I'll carry them out to the wagon for you. Oh, thanks, sir. They ain't very heavy. Haven't got much left, you know. Dad and Mother will be mighty glad to see you out in Illinois. They often talk about you. Do they? You have a voice like your father's. We have a fine place out there. You like it? I hope so. But then I like you, too. Are you sure you haven't forgotten anything? No. I remember everything very well. Seems like only yesterday I came here as a bride. Oh, no, I mean, your thing's all here. Nothing left behind? Why, everything's left behind. What's that bucket doing there? Young man, you'll be kind enough to fill that bucket and leach the ashes from it. Leach the ashes? What's that? Huh? Oh, of course you wouldn't know. We throw water over the winter's ashes. Makes lye. Oh. And then we use it for making soup. We've made our own soap here for over a century. I'll throw the water on if you want me to. No. Ain't no sense to it now. I forgot. Old habits are hard to break. You know, I should think you'd be glad enough to break with this old place. It looks mighty run down. Because you young men ran off and left it. Left the home. And the soil that made you one of the finest families in this old country. I'm glad to be the last owner of it. Old and broken down as it is. I'm old myself. And I love every stick and stone of it. I'm sorry, Grandma Weston. There's nothing to be sorry about. Sorry to be proud. Well, now, come on, young man. Open the door. Drive me away before I change my mind. <laughs> fertile plains of the West, Grandma Weston gets her first breathless glimpse of American farming on a large scale. The very next day after her arrival, Lemuel drives up in a buggy as Grandma waits for him on the porch. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa there. Hello, Grandma. Are you all ready? Uh, well, I'll get out and help you in. Oh, say, Lemuel, let's get away before the whole family troops along with us. I never see so much fuss and attention for one old lady in all my life. Of course, Grandma, if it bothers you, I... Bother me? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but today I want to learn something about farming. Your mother's always trying to get me to rest. Well, I never rested in my life. And I'm not going to begin now. <laughs> all right, Grandma. Now watch that high step now. Careful. Yeah, I will. There I'll get a boost. There you are. All right. Comfortable? Yeah, I'm all right. Come on, get in yourself. All right. Ah, there we are. Come on, get up. Get up. Where's your nearest neighbor, Lemuel? Oh, just on the other side of that wheat field. I can't see any house out there. Oh, I get not. That wheat field is over ten miles wide. Ten miles wide? Well, land sakes must take an army of men to plow and reap it. Oh, we have about 30 horses. We drive them in teams of eight or ten or more. And, of course, we use gang plows and the new reapers. Oh, you'll see them off yourself. My goodness. Oh, get up there. I didn't see your father at breakfast this morning. No, he went over to the Grange to settle some business with the railroads. The Grange? Yeah, that's the farmer's society that, well, sort of looks after their problems. My goodness, sounds like your father was in business. <laughs> Nowadays, a farm owner's got to be a businessman, as well as a laborer, an artisan, and a manager. Times have changed, Grandma. Not underneath the heavens, Lemuel. There's two things a Weston's got to be. First, last, and always. Hmm? What's that, Grandma? A good neighbor. And a good farmer. Today, the field, the telephone, and the radio has brought the farm family out of isolation into the great circle of world events. Farm machinery has become prodigious in science. Agricultural colleges and chemical laboratories show the way in chemistry and help the farmer to maintain his rightful place 
as one of the leaders in the cavalcade of America. think of a farm only as a place for raising things to eat. But chemistry has made the modern farm much more than that. Today, dozens of things grown on the farm take adventurous journeys through factories and end up as products so different that you'd never recognize them. Let's consider for a moment how much chemistry means to the farmer. Take soybeans, for example. For nearly a hundred years in this country, they were raised in limited quantities, mainly for feeding hogs. Then they began to become important as raw material for manufacturing. Last year, five and one-half million acres were planted in soybeans alone, simply because industrial uses have been developed for them. Soybean oil is used in paint, varnish, soaps, printing inks, linoleum, and various other products. And chemists have found more than 300 possible uses for soybean meal. The American farmer does a thriving business in vegetable oil. The DuPont Company alone uses annually 23 million pounds of such oils from soybeans, flaxseed, and tongue nuts. There's another story in corn. Chemists have developed more than 100 commercial uses for corn, ranging from glycerin, used in making dynamite, to carbon dioxide for dry ice. Every year, DuPont buys 36 million bushels of corn, representing the yield of 1,400,000 acres. Millions of pounds of cotton are converted annually by DuPont into articles that even remotely resemble a piece of cloth. Transparent plastics for safety glass, for instance. Colorful finishes, photographic film, and others. I could go on and on naming many other examples, such as the veritable ocean of molasses from sugar cane, used to make industrial alcohol, and the turpentine used for synthetic camphor and for paint. They all go to show how chemistry and engineering have opened up a future of unlimited possibilities for the American farmer. In addition to being good customers of the farmer, DuPont chemists contribute many aids to the business of farming, such as explosives for clearing land and draining swamps, seed disinfectants, insecticides, fungicides, fertilizer ingredients, paint, and other essential materials of daily use. Thus, chemistry helps the farmer to grow his crops and takes part of the crops to give him greater income. In this interesting partnership between farming and chemistry, you see a striking illustration of the DuPont phrase, better things for better living through chemistry. Hardiness. Stories of logging camps and oil fields will be broadcast next week at this same time when DuPont again presents the Cavalcade of America. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. W.A.B.C., New York.